Hi, I'm John and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to give you an overview of my garage home brewery. The past few years I wanted a dedicated space to brew my beer, so I decided to build an electric herm system in my garage. So behind me, to give you an overview of my setup, I have three kettles, starting with a 15 gallon Anvil electric brew kettle. This has a 20 amp Blickman boil coil inside. I have a condenser system instead of having a, an, an exhaust hood. I have a condenser system that converts the steam into water. And I have a Whirlpool return port for when I cool my beer down after boil. Next I have a 15 gallon mash tuned. Uh, pretty standard mash tune, and I do have a colander attachment at the top, so when I return my, my mash, it spreads the mash evenly in the, in the tube. And inside I have the Anvil mash screen. Works pretty well. And then finally I have a 7.5 gallon Anvil HLT hot liquor tank with uh, a Herms heat exchanger inside. Now all these kettles have the half inch NPT fitting. Now all my tubing has the Blickman, their version of the quick connect that allows me to quickly attach whatever length tube I need to each one of these kettles and it's pretty easy to operate. I know some, some breweries have the, the quick connects where you snap them on or there's a, some sort of lever. This, these just have a simple MPT fitting and I, can and I can attach it anywhere on any one of my kettles. Now for the brew stand itself, this was leftover wood from, my, from building my home. Uh, the great thing about building your own brew stand is that you can make it any size you want. So I built it big enough to for a Herm setup, which contains three kettles and a height that's comfortable for me. Now one cool feature about this brew stand is I built in a dedicated water line and I, I purchased a faucet that I can fill any one of my kettles with water you know, during, during a brew day. Uh, this water line is connected to an external faucet uh, so really the only thing I need to do during a brew day is to hook up my garden hose to a, a drinkable RV type water hose and I have a dedicated water line right on my brew table. Now behind my brew table I have a, you know, your standard household filter that filters out the water you know, for, for, the, for the brew session. Underneath the brew table, that's where I keep all my supplies. I have a Monster Mill uh, grain masher. I have uh, two pumps. I have uh, the first pump is a, you know, a Blickman Riptide and I also have a chugger for, for my systems. Now I, I must have used this chugger for about you know, 10, 10 plus years. It's been great. You know, I, this is what I typically use on my propane gas system. And I really just use it to transfer liquid from, from pot to pot. It does a great job. Uh, once I moved to this Herm system, I had to use a pump during the brew, brew session. And I just noticed that the chugger pump was really loud. So I just decided to go ahead and spend the money on a Blickman Riptide. And the Riptide is a really quiet pump. And it has all the attachments you need to adjust the flow. And also has the, the MPT fittings, fittings that work with my my quick mix. You know, in now, addition to the pumps, this is where I keep all my, my grains. I have my two row and all my specialty grains for my brew. I keep all my PBW, sand stars, scales, you know, you name it, anything I need during the brew day, it's, it's all kept in this one area. Uh, one, one additional thing I added to my brew table was a dedicated outlet. You know, underneath I have two outlets that are, are GFCI protected. I can use them for pumps or anything really I need for my brew day. Uh, but one thing in particular I use the outlets for is my glycol chiller. And here I have my two 
stainless steel bucket fermenters. These are made by Anvil and I have the, the heating and cooling options added to each bucket. I have a glycol cooling coil in each bucket and I also have a heating blanket underneath this neoprene jacket. Now I brew in the garage so the temperatures fluctuate you know, during different times of the year. And so far I've, I've, I've fermented about, I would say about 10 brews through these fermenters and this system has really done a nice job keeping the temperatures consistent throughout the fermentation process. Now I have a glycol chiller that I built that enables me to independently control each one of these fermenters. I'll go into more detail with a future video that goes over how I designed and built my glycol chiller. And for the brains of the brewery, I have two control panels behind me that control the boil kettle and the hot liquor tank. Each one of these control panels is controlled by a PID, which allows me to dial in the exact temperature I'm looking for during the brew day. I'll post another video that goes into more detail about these control panels. So that's a quick overview of my garage home brewery. I'll be posting more videos about my glycol chiller, my control panel, and other features of my brewery in the future. So if you're interested, subscribe and stay tuned.